Welcome to our CrowPy lesson 18. In today's lesson, we'll learn about button matrix. So, what actually is button matrix? Button matrix is like any button module we'll learn before, is a button. But the difference is, it's not just one button, but a lot of buttons connected together in the form of matrix. So, we have rows and we have columns. Each row and each column have a button. So, totally, we have eight GPIO pins they all connected to. Four GPIO pins for four columns and four GPIO pins for four rows. How does it work? We set all the buttons and all the rows into GPIO in. And when we get input, we cross them and we know which button being pressed. So, how are you going to use it and for what? Let's continue and see inside our Crow Pi. We are back to our Crow Pi. Let's find out where the button matrix is. As you can see, we have multiple buttons on the board. The first one is the left buttons and then the right buttons. Well, the matrix are those buttons. Four here and four there, creating a matrix. Now, how do we use those buttons? In order to use all the buttons, both the matrix and the other buttons on the left, we need to switch the left switch on. So we'll go over with the fingers and turn them all on. This time on this switch we don't have LED to indicate, but we, we can assure you that it's gonna work. Now, after we switched on, we can go into our CrowPy folder and find a script called matrix matrix button matrix yeah this one now don't confuse with matrix demo matrix demo is the matrix led as we discussed before we will open the file called matrix buttons yeah button matrix.py all right let's open it with our python ide and take a look into our code now it might seem that the code is very complicated but we we can try to go one by one and understand how does it work. We import the GPIO library in the time library as the buttons are just like any normal button using GPIO in. We set the GPIO mode into GPIO board. We can also use GPIO BCM, but better to use board and we always use it in our lessons. Now, we create inside the, our object, which is button matrix, we create a place called button IDs. Now inside we put in a matrix all our numbers of the buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. As you can see on the buttons, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Exactly the amount of buttons. Now, in the rows, we put 13, 15, 29, 31. You might think, what is this? Well, this is the GPIO pins that we are letting in inside the rows. And then we have GPIO outputs for columns. So, after we put the rows, we need to put the columns 33, 35, 37, 22. You can find the GPIO numbers on the label as well, next to the switch. Now, after we configured all the buttons, both GPIO and the names we would like to give them, we'll go down. For I in range, len self row pins means we will go we will run in a loop in a range of the row pins and then we will set up each one as GPIO in pull up down GPIO PUD up, which is the pull up down, which we can click it and release it. Now after we set up all of them, instead of setting one by one, we just go through a loop. Now after setting all of them, we go on another loop in the columns because the previous one were the rows. Now inside the columns we set up again all the columns pins and then we output them to be one. Now we have another function called activate button which when we click the button it will go through here and print that button str button index plus one is pressed which is the button name. You can use this function and put inside what you want to do with the button. For example, if it's button number 13 or button number two, you can choose what action to take. For example, turn on LED or turn on the buzzer and so on. You can put your action inside this function. We have button held down, which if the button is held, keep pressed, it will return true. If not, it will return false. Now let's go into our main function. We keep this loop forever and we check for in the loop which button been pressed. As soon as button been pressed, it will say button activate button, which will print which button we press right now. And if it's held down, we will pass, we will continue searching. If not, we will output the column pin and set it to be high. Now, 
how it's all working, let's run the script and see. When you first run it, you will notice that there is nothing very special. You will see no output. But let's start to press from the first button on the right. Button 1 pressed. Button 2. Button 3. Button 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. As you can see, all the buttons are working great. And you can press them randomly. It doesn't have to be by order. And you will see that they're all working. All right, what are you going to do with this? We can't wait to see. And we hope to see you in our next lesson.